Hi, 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 everybody. It is Kathy, and I love to be selling. Come on in, sellers. We are going to talk about being irresistible to eBay shoppers. Always, always a good topic. And I have got four top tips for you to be irresistible to eBay shoppers. My tips are good for people with a store or without a store. They're great tips for you to stand out to eBay shoppers and also to stand out to shoppers on the internet. One of the tips in particular I'm going to share is a great way to compete with large sellers on eBay if you're a small medium seller and also a great way to compete with larger sites like Amazon, Walmart, and large retailers. And I'm going to lead with that tip because it's the most important one and it's one that's often overlooked by sellers or just sort of poo-pooed people. Mm, that's not such a big deal. It is a big deal. And particularly as we go into the holiday season, it becomes a big deal. And the other thing to think about, and I'm going to talk about this first tip, is anytime people are shopping for special events. So when they're shopping for birthdays and anniversaries. So yes, right now, and it is October, you know, people are shopping for Christmas and Hanukkah and Halloween. But all year long, there are special events that people are online shopping for. So they'll be online with us and they'll be shopping for anniversaries and birthdays and housewarming. So these tips are useful for the holiday season and all year long. You ready? Good. The first tip to be irresistible to eBay shoppers is customer service. And I know some of you will be going, oh, Kathy, you know, we, <laughs> we, we've heard of customer service or, oh, it's not that big a deal. You know, tell us about hot things to source. And I will tell you why customer service is such a big deal for being irresistible to eBay shoppers and also to compete with the big eBay sellers and to compete with the big sites. And this is it. So I don't know about you, but I shop on the Internet almost every day. And yes, most of my shopping is on eBay, but I do shop other sites too. When you have a question, so I have a question about, um, let's say it's a button up shirt. I can't tell how many buttons it is, or they're saying it's mustard yellow. And I can't tell, like, is it a bright yellow? It looks sort of neon in some pictures and it looks duller in other pictures. So I want a little clarification on color or I want to be told which of the pictures is the most true. But any kind of question, let's say they have measurements for the item, let it be a vase or a cup or a clothing item, and I want another measurement. Perhaps I want the measurement um, from the mug all the way to the outside of the handle because I'm concerned about it fitting on my mug tree, okay? Or you have a mug up, but you haven't told me how many ounces it is, and I cannot tell how many ounces it is by looking at it. I can't tell if it's a 10 ounce or a 12 ounce or a 14 ounce. So I message you, okay? Or I message a big site. Again, I'm buying a mug, I'm on a big website, and they have not indicated how many ounces are the mug. If you typically message a large seller, okay, what happens is they usually have um, an automatic response, so you will message them and you'll get a response back. This is true, like with all websites, by the way, if you're messaging banks and just sort of any retailer, but you message them, you will get an auto respond. And an auto respond is it's, it's done through the computer. It's not a person. It's just set up. It's called a bot. And they'll say, we have your message. And typically the kind of thing they say is, and we will get back to you within one business day, or they'll say our business hours are and they tell you what the business hours are, we will respond typically within some sites, two to three business days, right? I'm like, Ooh. Um, so I'm messaging them on Tuesday. I may not hear from them till Thursday or Friday with my question. And I don't want to buy it because it's a gift or it's for me. And, and whatever this thing is, the measurement or the color or whatever my question is, I don't want to buy it until I get an answer to my question. So here you now enter uh, my small, medium-sized eBay seller, and you have, let's say, the exact same mug or a similar mug or a similar shirt or hair bow or whatever it is, and they message you. What is the measurement from the outside of the mug to the end of the handle? Or because you didn't indicate it in the listing, is it microwavable? Okay, always a big question. 
and you get the message, right? Because it comes through your phone or your computer. Situation one, let's say you are away from where your inventory is. Okay. And there's nobody in the house or in your, in your home office that can look it up. This is what I suggest you do because it's important that you respond and that you respond in a way where you don't sound like an auto responder. So that you say, thank you for your question. I'm away from my inventory right now, or I'm away from my office right now, whatever you want to say. I typically say I'm away from my office right now, but I'll be back and tell them when. And I always make it a little later than when I think I'm going to be back. Um, so if I'm pretty sure I'm going to be back by three. I say, I will be back by 4 p.m. And I let them know the time zone, right? I'm in New York. So I'll say 4 p.m. ET, Eastern, um, Eastern time. Okay. Um, just, you know, because I don't know what time zone they're in necessarily. Um, I'll be sure to get back to you then. And then I, and then I make sure I set like a reminder on my phone or I piece of paper, or whatever, to remind myself to check that when I get home. And then I get home, get the mug out. Is it microwavable? I flip it over. I get the vase out. I remeasure the length. They want me to double check it or they want the diameter of the base, whatever it is. And I then hop on my phone, my computer, and I answer them. And you will be surprised how many sales you get because you answer promptly, okay? The first thing is answer even if you don't have the answer, okay? And don't make it up because you don't want to give the wrong information. And just say, I'm away right now because you might be a part-time eBay seller, okay? You have a regular job. You don't get home till four or five o'clock. That's fine. And, just, and you don't need to tell them that. Just say, I'm away from my office right now. I'm away from my inventory but I'll be there, let them know the time and then get back to them with the information. Again, they'll respond. Perfect. All of a sudden you get a sale, which is always great. Or they might respond. You know what? That's not right for me, but thank you so much for getting right back to me. And many sellers let me know, and this has happened to me where they didn't buy that item, but sure enough, two weeks later, three weeks later, a month later, guess who comes back and they are shopping with you? That person that you responded to a month ago with the question, because they remember the care that you took of them. And that's so important. And that goes into my second tip of how to be irresistible to eBay shoppers is everybody, I don't know about you, but for instance, I just went and got a manicure pedicure and I go to the manicure pedicure place in my neighborhood because they take really good care of me. I actually tried another manicure pedicure place because they were running a deal. So they were a little cheaper than my regular manicure pedicure place. And I was like, oh, let me just try them. Let me see. I'll save a few bucks and try this other place. And they, they were okay, but they didn't pay attention to me. So they put me in the chair, they do it. And they're like staring into space. No, not even just sort of like, hi, how are you? How's your, just completely obviously could care less. You know, so they did the job, but staring into space, no engagement, not even the slightest amount of, of chit chat, um, did the job, didn't check with me to see like, you know, what, what, you know, are you happy? Is everything good? Because you know how it is sometimes with a manicure, you want them to go back and just do a little touch up or something. They just, there was no personal nothing. And my regular manicure pedicure place also, I'm sure because they know me, but I'm there today. And then, you know, I'm, I'm getting everything done and then I'm putting on my shoes and I'm leaving. And not only does the owner, because she knows me, I've gone there for several years, but some of the other ladies too on my way out, goodbye, goodbye, just the pleasantness and, and engaging with you and having relationship. And we can do that with our buyers. And I will tell you why. One with the messaging, right? Which is to answer the message, be nice, be polite. And the other thing when you reply to messages, before I move on to my second point, don't forget that when you get a message when you click reply, you can click reply with offer and do that. So answer the question, hey, I'm going to be back in my office at four o'clock. I'll give you the answer then or give them the answer. And then I always say, and I'm including a special offer just for you. So the item is listed for 30. I offer it to them for 26 or 25 and I send it off, right? That little extra personal touch. And that goes to point two which is the unwrapping of the item. 
And I realized that we sell a large variety of items and some items are more conducive um, to little extra wrapping than other items, okay? So if I'm ordering, you know, something like batteries, I don't necessarily looking for it to be wrapped in tissue paper, okay? But for instance, I ordered some water filters for my water filter picture from eBay. And, um, and that's the kind of thing where you could just take it and throw it into a padded mailer, you know, either with an invoice or a business card and be done. The seller, the box was a little, it had obviously had a little shelf where wherever they got it from, which is fine. I'm buying it for the water filters. I'm not buying it for the box, but they had taken the box and wrapped it in bubble wrap very nicely. I don't think there was a business card. So they wrapped it in bubble wrap. There was an invoice thanking me for my purchase with handwriting and pretty Sharpie. And they put it in a bubble mailer. So even though the box obviously had a little shelf where they went above and beyond to wrap it nicely because the filters are inside the box. If, if something was dropped on the box, it could potentially damage the filters. So they had gone the extra mile. The bubble wrap probably added like maybe another ounce to the package, which sometimes will cost you more money or not. But they had gone the extra mile so that when I opened that poly mailer and I pulled out the filters, it was a nice experience. For things that are more something like clothing um, is, yes, you could just fold it and put it into a poly mailer or put it into a bubble mail mailer, however you ship. Typically, clothing goes in a poly mailer because it's light and there's no reason to add the extra weight. But what I do with clothing items and also oftentimes with a small collectible, I always like to have some kind of inner wrapping. And it's because things can get damaged in transit. And that's what I want to say, too, about being irresistible to eBay shoppers is you want to think, yes, you want to save the money on the postage. At the same time, you want to do everything you possibly can to make sure that the item arrives to your buyer in good condition, right? We want them to be happy. We want to be happy. We want the whole thing to go well. So what I always do, I always do some kind of inner wrapping. So like the seller did for me with the filters where they wrapped it in, in um, bubble wrap. So that way, if anything had happened to the package, there's cushioning there for the filters. So it's unlikely they're going to get cracked um, is to take the shirt, to take the blouse, to take the dress and fold it nicely. And I put it into an inner plastic mailer and I seal it. And then I have cute little thank you stickers and you can get them. I mean, Vistaprint has them. There's other websites that have them. You can create them yourself if you'd like to do that. But just a nice, eBay has it, eBay shipping supplies, a nice thank you sticker. I put it on. And if you have an eBay store, they're fun to do with your logo. There's sites like Vistaprint, Custom Prints. There's a bunch of them where you could do a nice thank you sticker with your logo. Put it on. You include your business. I include business cards and I'm a big fan of business cards because my contact information is there. One, especially if you have an eBay store, it's the name of your store, right? And if they're happy with you, if they like shopping with you, they might hang on to that business card, particularly if you're a more niche seller. So if you sell craft supplies, if you sell um, kids shoes, if you sell women's shoes, women's clothing, women's luxury bags, you, a business card is a really good idea because they're happy. They got a great deal with you. You wrapped it beautifully. There's a good chance they'll save that business card. Okay. Even if you're a variety seller, they're happy. It was really cool. They love the way you wrapped it. They love the item. It was a great value. There's a good chance they'll save your business card. Okay. So name of your business. If you don't have a store, you can do your user ID. It is a good idea to give out your eBay email just in case anything goes on. They can email you. You'll then move them to eBay messages because we want all messaging to go through eBay messages, right? But there's ways to contact you if there's any kind of feedback or something where they want to get a hold of you. I put my phone number in. I do not have a problem giving my phone number to my shoppers. And I'll tell you who I find calls me typically are my older shoppers because they may not be that comfortable with the internet and they get it. And I've had them call. This actually happened. A lady called, um, she, I forget what she bought, but she bought an item. She loved it. And she wanted to tell me, which I thought was so sweet. So she gets on the phone. She calls me. I picked it up. I was like, okay. Um, I, I recognize the item. So I'm looking up the item on the computer while I'm chatting with her. While we're talking, she went into my store and bought four more items. She wanted to chat 
She wanted to talk. Remember going into stores and you have your favorite clerk? Okay, and you might have this locally in your store. You have your favorite cashier. They want that relationship. So I don't have a problem giving out my email, okay? And if you're on social media, it's good to put your social media so they can follow you on Pinterest and Facebook or whatever. But it's nice to have that business card because it says you're a business. And it has your, your store ID. So that way they can come back and shop with you again, okay? So that some kind of inner wrapping, it just, it just protects it, whether it's bubble wrap or plastic. If you are some kind of pretty stickers are not a bad idea. Um, and you can do stickers that are guy friendly. If you're, if you're selling guy stuff, right. Mm -hmm. It's just that it looks nice when you shop from some places, literally you open the box, there's a couple of air pillows and you don't always get air pillows and the item falls out and you don't want to be that you want to stand out. So when they open you know, for some items, perhaps some pretty tissue and, and you don't have to like, you know, be super artsy crafts. You just a piece of tissue nicely folded around the item, the inner plastic seal. So if, if some moisture somehow gets through the poly mailer or the box, the item is still safe. A nice thank you note on the invoice or a nice thank you sticker on the item, whatever you like. And a business card is a good idea. The idea is that you stand out. The idea is that they don't open the box of the poly mailer and the thing just falls out like with an air pillow or something, that it's pleasant. It's a gift to themselves, even if it is a set of water filters. I remember that. And I will look for that seller because if you don't know this, when you shop on eBay, you can go back and log into your account and you can search the order. So I could search the water filters again. And if that seller has more, I would absolutely buy with them again. Okay. So Think about what is it like to open the box? What is it like to open the mailer? One more thing on the mailer too, that there's always a little bit of wiggle room. There's nothing worse than getting a package and it's it's so tight in the mailer that I'm scared that I'm going to cut into the item or rip into the item somehow when I open it. So always try to leave a little bit of wiggle room. I'm talking about for soft things, not fragile things, so that they can get into the package without slicing into the shirt or the dress or the skirt. I've gotten some items where I literally, I'm almost crying trying to open the package because there's, I literally just sort of open one little corner and then sort of open it because it's so hard to open it without potentially damaging the item. So answer promptly, a really nice unboxing experience, whatever that's going to look like. And this is one to think about because of um, the typical slowdown that happens with the mail um, at the holidays, but it can happen during the year too, sometimes with weather, is depending on where you are and what your abilities are, is to do more than one trip or drop off with the post office. So let's say your local mail carrier does pick up your mail, which is great from you. And let's say they do it at 1030 or 11 in the morning. If it's possible, if you are driving by the post office later in the afternoon, and here in my neighborhood, the last pickup is at 530 at my local post office. So my husband typically drops off the mail first thing in the morning because we know if you get the mail in by 11, you go out in the first truck. But if we have a lot of orders later on in the day, if one of us is going by the post office at 3.30 or 4, we will take that day's mail that's come in since the morning and we'll put it, we, we carry everything in Ikea bags, um, we'll carry it and we'll drop it at the post office for a second drop off. And particularly during holiday time, we do that a lot because that extra half a day really makes a difference. We do ship on Saturday because our post office does have a pickup on Saturday. I realize not everybody's post office does. And same thing. So we will ship six days a week, even though with eBay, if you're not aware of it, to eBay a business day for handling time for your packages is Monday through Friday. You're not required to ship on Saturdays. I do ship on Saturdays because, again, it just helps it to get it on the way quicker. And it's a way to stand out because of various sites, people are very used to very quick shipping. And what I find it's also being in New York, because in New York, we do have multiple postal pickups, but we do get mail slowdowns too, is anything I can do to help the packages get on their way quicker, I know will really help with the customer satisfaction and me being irresistible to shoppers because your shoppers leave you feedback. 
And when I read my feedback, a good 80% of my feedback, they'll say, you know, love the item, you know, wonderful seller, which is always great to read. But I'm going to tell you that 60, 70, 80% of my feedback is fast shipping, got here before it was expected. I can't believe how fast it was because we're getting it out in the morning. My husband actually had a long conversation with the postal manager and found out that if we get our mail in before 11 o'clock in the morning, it goes out in the first truck that goes to the sorting area in the New York City area, which is actually in North Jersey. Um, and now we also have added an afternoon, a late afternoon drop off on days where there's a lot of mail. Okay. So, and that's how to be irresistible. Again, think like a shopper, put on that shopper hat. What are they looking for? If they have a question to get a fast response, to not have to wait a day or two. And it's a way to stand out. You know, if you're selling shampoo, especially if you're selling commodities, I'm selling shampoo or conditioner or perfume or clothing that I can get on other sites too. Um, even home decor, even collectibles, you know, even when it's unique collectibles, there's a lot of unique collectibles out there that we're competing with. So the quicker I can get back to my customer with a courteous, professional, kind response, even if it is to say, I don't have your answer right now, but I will have it in a few hours. Just hang tight. I promise to get back to you. And then letting them know. And then the other thing is to send them that offer to respond. And they have the offer. So they're even more incentivized to shop with you. And then the second thing is to think about what is the experience when they open the mailer, they open the box, okay? So that it's pleasant, it's nice, even if the things shift around a little bit, that they are going to be happy when they get that item. And to consider an invoice that has your business name, a business card with your business name, you know, something to help them. And if they really had a great time, is they're going to hang on to that business card or that insert or whatever you put in and something like a thank you sticker or to write thank you on the invoice, however you you package your items to think about it, because everybody likes to hear the words thank you. And then know your post office. Again, if you've got a great relationship with your local mail carrier and you know they're there in the morning or the afternoon or whatever, and and you again, you might be a part-time eBay seller, you've got a very busy home life, you know, kids are at home, you've got elder care, you're working from home at another business. Your, your local post office is not really local. <laughs> it's like a half an hour, 45 minute drive, then absolutely you do what you're doing. But if you're going out in the afternoon or your partner's going out in the afternoon or any member of your household's going out in the afternoon and you've maybe have sold three, four, five or more things, yay, and they're going right by the post office, consider adding the extra postal pickup. Again, just that extra half day can really make a difference because when they get it and they get wowed by how fast the item comes, you're getting that feedback about the speed of your shipping. And people check feedback when they come in to shop with you. They look at the item, right? So they're going to look at your nice pictures, your title, your description. They also check your feedback. And I know when you're new to eBay, it can be frustrating. It's like, Kathy, I want more feedback. I only have five or 10. Listen, if I come and look at your item and it's a good looking listing, like it's got good pictures, you've written a nice description, it's a nice item, it's what I want, you're priced nicely, you answer my questions and you only have six feedback, but every single feedback says, what a great seller, so nicely packaged. I have no problem shopping with you because I know that you're going to take care of me. But shoppers do read feedback. So keep an eye out what people are saying about you. It's also great feedback because you look at it. What do they talk about? Do they talk about your great items? Yay. Then they love what you're selling. Do they talk about your shipping? Clearly shipping matters to them. Do they talk about how well it's packaged? Clearly packaging matters to them. So what people say about your items in the feedback is a great source of information for you. So it's good, good, good to read it and see what matters to them. And that's how you get to be irresistible to eBay shoppers. I've got more great tips for you. If you go over to my website, I love to be selling.com and right up at the top, it says free tips. And when you do that, when you click it, you're going to land here and I've got wonderful tips for you. eBay listings that sell. It's a free guide and it will tell you exactly a little bit of what I was going into about how to really stand out to your shoppers. 
because you want to have listings that stand out, right? Because then they're shopping with you. Then you're giving them great customer service. You're wrapping it beautifully. You're shipping the best you can as, you know, with everything going on, you're doing the best you can on shipping. And then that's the complete package, right? You've got irresistible listings, irresistible customer service. You've done everything you possibly can to be the wonderful eBay seller that you are. And that's what successful sellers do. Successful sellers have five feedback. Successful sellers have 50 feedback, 100 feedback. Successful sellers on eBay are about having wonderful listings and then delivering wonderful customer service. So those are my tips for you. Enjoy, 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 everybody. Bye-bye.